Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing N Queens number 51 in the lead code problem set. Um, this problem states that um, the N Queens puzzle is the problem of placing N Queens on an N times N chessboard such that no two Queens attack each other. And then here's an image. Um, that is a N Queens puzzle solution and it is a eight by eight grid. Okay, so each solution contains a distinct board configuration of the ends uh, and queen's placement, where Q and the dot both indicate a queen and an empty space respectively. Okay, so when it's a four by four chessboard, here are the two solutions that um, are placed in such that no two queens attack each other. So let's take a look at the whiteboard. So right here, I've actually pulled their image for a better uh, visual. And I've also pulled their input. So when it's a four by four grid, these are the two solutions. Um, the Unqueen's problem is a very famous backtracking problem. And by backtracking, I mean where you make lots of decisions, which um, gets saved in which you can make other decisions upon that. And when you reach a uh, viable solution, you can uh, store it into whatever you're storing and return the answer. So to generate the solution, you wanna try to place each queen on each tile of the board, obviously, and see if it works. If it does work, recurse through with um, this updated board and repeat the process until the program finishes placing queens in the last row. To check whether a queen can be placed on a tile, simply use its row index and column index. Um, I have an ex example shown below that I'll go over, go over very soon. Afterwards, translate the board into a list and add that list onto the results list. At the end, return the, results, return the result list. So basically, this is the step that we're going to take to solve the problem. Use this backtracking. If you want a more uh, everyday uh, example for backtracking, think about when you can't find your phone. And the last location that you remember that you had your phone in, say, was the living room, right? And then you go to the living room and then remember that it's not there. So then you go to um, your garage to see if it was there. But basically it's that you uh, make the decisions and you build other uh, decisions upon that. And now let's take a look at how to check whether the queen can be placed onto a tile. So I think you guys all know this, but a queen, um, here's my queen, she can move left to right, um, down or up. Um, she can also move diagonally in both directions. So um, obviously we don't need to take care of down or up, it depends. Um, if you're recursing row by row, then you don't need to take about the, to care about the row. If you're recursing column by column, then you don't have to care about the column but however you still do need to worry about the two diagonals so here's what we're gonna do to separate out the diagonals as you can see right here um, these all form diagonals like these um, as you can see these numbers they form diagonals all right it's pretty obvious and these are the values, and each cells are the values of i plus j, and a diagonal forms. So in order to get the diagonal, you simply just add i plus j together to see which diagonal they're on. And to get the other diagonal, I didn't have the example here, but basically you just used i minus j, sorry, j minus i. And then to get the vertical values, use J. If you want to get the horizontal ones, use I. Okay, so that's how you do the end queen's problem. 
and now we're um, and now we're going to code it in leak code. So right here, that's the template code. I'm actually gonna start by uh, writing out the recursive function first. So it's gonna be a void function because um, we it doesn't have to be a void. You could return um, a list list at the end, but I'm just gonna use a a void function and a global variable at the end. I'm gonna call it place queen and it's gonna have it's gonna take in a board to keep track of the queens. Um, since this question asks you to return a list string, um, you could use a string list and just add on that, but I'm actually gonna have a function at the end that converts this int um, to the int array into a string list. Um, but you could just append it to a string list. But anyways, it's I'm gonna have a two D array that's a that's the board, and then I'm gonna have the i, which is the row index, because I'm gonna actually recurse through rows, and then I have a set that takes care of the first diagonal set that takes care of the second diagonal. diagonal 2 and then a set that takes care of the vertical indices All right so now it's pretty exciting so every recursive function you need to have a base call so the program stops and in here our base call is if I becomes the length of the board then we're gonna call um, basically what we're gonna do is call the function that adds the string okay so I'll write that function soon but right now I'm just gonna put the comment here to remind us that this is our base case and afterwards we just return out of there okay so now just like any usual backtracking problem, we're going to make some recursive calls. And since we want to recurse through every tile in the board to see if they work, we need to recurse through the column indices. So I'll actually call it j at equals zero, and then j is whoops, j is less than four dot length, and I can do that because it's an n by n board, which means the width is equal to the length. And then j plus plus. Okay, so now you need to check if at that specific tile your queen can be placed. And you can do that by checking if diagonal contains i plus j. Remember, i plus j is simply this diagonal. And you want to make sure it doesn't, so you make sure to put the exclamation mark. And you want it to be in conjunction Oh, conjunction and with you don't you also don't want that in uh, the diagonal to be in diagonal two contains j minus i and the reason I chose a set was because its contains function is a o a one call so it's fast and you also do not want um the index the j index to be in vertical so we don't want vertical to co contain j okay so if that's the case that means you're ready to recurse through the tiles so i'll make board at i j one and one means that there's a queen and the tile zero means there's no queen and you also want to add the diagonals onto the list if it doesn't exist so later uh, decisions can be made upon that so I'm just adding the values that I had in the uh, condition onto the list so I can use it later or refer to it later okay so we finished modifying this step this is this step is like the decision making and then you get to the next decision, which is place the queen again. Pass in board. 
and then you pass in I plus one, which means you go to the next row because your queen can't stay on this row because there's already a queen on that row. And then we'll also pass in the same diagonal, uh, diagonal two, and vertical. All right, so this is the step where decision takes place. But backtracking, as you know, also needs you to get rid of these um, values so later ones doesn't get crowded with the unnecessary values. So you, ha you actually have to uh, revert it back before anything else. So uh, there isn't like a bunch of values that shouldn't be there but is there. So you just want to remove the values that you've passed in and then your program will be done. And the last one is vertical.removej. Okay, so this is the main body of the function. And that's it for this call. We just have to finish this and load it up in our main class. So I'm going to make the function void add to list. It's going to take in the board as usual. And then, so um, I need a list string because the return function is a listless string. I'll call it list just for, just because I can't think of any other name to call it. Um, now you need to recurse through the board. Um, pretty easy recursive call. Again, if you if you chose not to use an int array array board, that's totally fine because you can use the string array and just add the string into the list and then add the list onto the list list. Um, but personally, I like int array because it's just I don't know. It's I, I feel like it's easier to operate on. But it does make this program a little slower. Um, so if board at i and at j is equal equal to zero, that means that's a dot, and we need a string to store this dot. So I'll call it temp. So that's a dot. So you add the dot. Else that means it's a one. Then you add the q, and the q is a capital q. And after this loop, you can add the string onto the list. And then after this, after this loop, you can, oh, we need to create our global variable first. So our variable, I'll call it res because it's the results. Okay, so that's res. And then right now you just need to add res, sorry, add list to res. After that, this function is done. I'm going to replace this comment with the function name. Add to list board. And then there we go. OK, so right here, we call place queen new int array, new int int array n, n and then um, new hash set. new hash set, and new hash set. Oops. I forgot to put the i index there, so I'll go do that real quick. And i is obviously going to start at 0, so that's just a 0. And then we'll return the res. And let's see if it works. And it does. Let's submit. And it passes. So as you can see, it passes 16.23. Could probably be faster if you replaced a 2D array with a string. But that's how you do end queens. Um, end queens 2 is basically the same problem. But instead of returning um, the string lists, it asks you to return the count. So that's end queens 2. And this is end queens. It's, this is the, and this part is backtracking. 
it's a pretty good thing to understand and use to solve problems. And that's how you solve in Queens. I hope you enjoyed this video and remember to like and subscribe.